And now, ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. Welcome to PreneurCast. Yeah, business cards being swapped, beers being drunk. Can I say a nasty word? Can I say procrastination? With Pete Williams and Tom Kosher. How well did that go down? Talk about that entire thing in a very another rant and soapbox episode if you want to. Visit us online at PreneurMarketing.com. Hey, welcome to the very first episode of PreneurCast with myself and my good buddy Dom. How are you, buddy? Hey, Pete. I'm pretty good, mate. Pretty good. Awesome. So this is a, a bit of an idea we've been shuffling around for a while, just to jump on for 20 minutes to half an hour each each week and just talk about random things that can hopefully help a, a, another entrepreneur um, you know, succeed and, and, and get that little bit further to, to whatever the goal they're trying to achieve. So, well, that's that's the plan anyway. That is the plan. Um, that's about as much planning as we have done. Is the intro? Uh, oh, hey, hey, we have a mind map. True, we have a mind map. You've you've uh, you've prepared. You've done some homework, which I love, and uh, we have a mind map that we'll try and follow. Be nice and organised. Yeah, it'll never last. No, we can try though. We can we can have big dreams. <laughs> Okay, so look, you know, I mean, I think before we start, Pete, we talked about this before, but I know who you are, you know who I am. Uh, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out who I am myself, though, that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but look, I think I think pretty much we should take a couple of minutes and just explain uh, why why we're doing this, why you think, uh, why we think it was a good idea. Um, you know, a little bit about your background, just to fill in people who might have come to this from, well, wherever they came from. No, sounds good. Uh, it's always funny to talk about yourself. It's always weird to sort of, you know, try and big note yourself and things. But I guess I've got my hand in a, a few different pies. Um, I have a telecommunications company here in Australia, uh, involved in a finger food company, a marketing company, uh, and a few other e-commerce sites as well. So I've got my hand in, in quite a few different pies, which seems to, to keep me very, very busy, and, uh, and I enjoy that. And uh, wrote a couple of books, and some other people, I guess, think I'm – half decent because I've won a few entrepreneurial awards over the last couple of years. So I guess I'm, I'm doing something right to, to make someone stand up and notice me. Yeah, I, 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 you, you managed to avoid it, but I'm not going to let you. Um, you do have that little quote on various press releases and things that uh, Australians answer to Richard Branson. <laughs> yes, that's uh, been a bit of a tagline the media has given me, which I, I, I am happy to embrace. It's always weird sort of saying it yourself, but I'm happy for other people to say it and I'll uh, definitely back it up and, and reinforce it. So yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a great little tagline I've had for, for quite a few years now in Australia, which is pretty cool. It's, it's awesome. I, I mean, it, <clears throat> for my part, I mean, I, I'm here as a, a kind of a, a bystander um, and, and the, the guy that uh, kind of prompts you every now and then really, you know, we, we work together because I produce your media um, mm-hmm. for all your various ventures. And this idea came about because you are, I would say you're a serial entrepreneur. You, you love being involved in businesses and you love uh, making things happen, taking an idea and making it real. And what interested me was the way that you use um, standard business theory, but you also use technology, the latest and greatest technology, or really some really old-fashioned and ordinary stuff to make that stuff happen in the most efficient way. Because if you look at the spread of all those things that you just listed, it's quite amazing that you managed to, well, actually, that you managed to make it to lunch, really. (laughs) um and you know quite a few people as, as you've done presentations and and things in conferences and stuff you know quite a few people comment on this you know how amazing it is that you get all this stuff done so really what what we thought was we we would cover some of that stuff you know mm-hmm. how do you get all this stuff done what what drives you as well you know because that's that's interesting a lot of people wonder you know why did you get out of bed in the morning what makes you get out of bed so it could get a little bit random which would um, be good but which will be very good. Absolutely. Uh, and, and we'll always have our mind maps to bring us back. Well, you'll have your mind map that I'll look at two minutes before the show. That's... <laughs> no, no, we'll definitely be getting through a lot of stuff. And I think, you know, the productivity is a big element and everyone sort of is really loving the whole workflow conversation these days. I think there's a lot of blog posts and a heck of a lot of conversation around workflows. And look, definitely important. I'm a big, big believer in workflows, but I think hopefully that we can take this beyond workflows um definitely mentions the stuff i'm doing and how i'm doing what i'm doing and even how you're doing what you're doing because there's uh definitely some stuff that you're doing that will help a lot of people but i sort of want to talk about other things that are kind of just 
cropping up that are happening on a week to week basis, whether it be looking at uh, assessing a new business opportunity or whether it's uh, just books I've read recently or, or thoughts and conversations I've had that might be helpful to other people. Uh, you know, they say that, you know, the best way to learn and, and re- reinforce it yourself is to teach it. So I guess this is a great way for me to kind of try and communicate stuff out there, which will not only help other people, but reinforce it for myself. Yeah. I mean, that, the, one of those, I'm, I'm going to do it to you again, mate. It's like another one of those quotes that, that pops up is that you're, you are a bit of a renaissance guy. Uh, what a word, eh? I'm, what a word. I'm not that old. <laughs> Um, but it, one of the things, again, that I've noticed about you having worked on the different projects that you work on and, and you know, read, read some of the stuff you produce and, and been involved with you for some time is that you do really have all these different influences and different things that you're interested in. Um, and, and I'm really looking forward to you bringing some of that out, you know, in the, in the talks rather than just, oh, yes, this, this week I've been using this methodology and this, this piece of software and stuff like that. It's like, you know, I think it's far more interesting to be more real about it. Yeah. Um, so you've got a lot of breadth there. Um, and you mentioned, you you mentioned that you know you you want to maybe do workflow, but yeah, look at tools and look at um, information and books that you're reading and things like that. Um, and 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 influencers as well. I mean, one of the things I think uh, people are interested in is influencers. You know, where you get your ideas from where you, you know, where, where you got your, your kind of your start as well, yep. you know, how you've moved on through. So that could be an interesting thing to cover. No, we can definitely cover a lot of different stuff. So I think the hard part's going to be making sure that we can keep concise and only keep to about half an hour per episode, which I think is a, a good, a good um, point to, to aim at every episode so people can sort of, you know, digest it quite easily. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked in, in, in the brief planning that we did for this. We're really making it sound like it's so professional, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it'll, it'll sound professional as long as nobody actually listens to it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, one of those things, it, one of the things that you're big on is optimizing your time. Mm. Um, and, and so one of the things we're going to be big on is optimizing other people's time, including not taking up too much of it with us rambling on. Um, so yeah, we, we're going to try and stick to that half an hour. I've got a close eye on the, the clock here. And uh, I'm not sure what kind of noise I'm going to make to let you know we're close to half an hour. I'll maybe surprise you every week. So I, could, I could use my menu bar countdown timer. That would have been pretty cool. So yeah. My, yeah. Late, my latest uh, fascination with apps. I'm, I'm loving the different apps at the moment. That's my, my latest sort of uh, focus is a little really random countdown timer that sits in my menu bar. So we could have started that and it you know, gives a little bit of a, a, a thing at the end once it's, it counts down to a preset time. So we could have... Uh, use that but i found that really handy actually just in terms of you know if we want to start off with a bit of workflow stuff um just using that to sort of keep focus for different periods of time you know whether i'm right working on a particular project or or an element of a project of a different business i can sort of say okay i'm going to dedicate 25 minutes to this and, and start the countdown timer and just you know force myself to, to really stay focused for that time and just push out as much as i can in that 25 minutes so um, that's so, really- so you, you said that you said you're 25 minutes. Now, <clears throat> here is a, here's one of those really big topics to start on. Let's see if we can keep it small. So, are you a big fan of pomodoros? Then, um, yeah, I guess not in the the sense of uh, I don't really eat tomatoes, but the pomodoro. <laughs> I actually don't like to, to eat tomatoes for whatever reason. But uh, the pomodoro technique, absolutely, it's a it's a great little technique about doing stuff in, in 25 minutes and then you do a five-minute break and then you do, I think it's four, and that's classes of Pomodoro. So 25 minutes of focus time, then a five-minute break doing whatever you want, be it Angry Birds or Twitter or 10 push-ups. Um, and then you sort of repeat that four times, is it? And then you take a longer break, is that? Uh, well, yeah, uh, that's that's the kind of the official, as if you can call it official, that's the official way is, mm-hmm. is do a maximum bunch of work for a lot of like maximum two hours, I think, in 25 minute slots with the breaks and then take a longer break. Yeah, um, I think it's it's not necessarily the Pomodoro technique that, that I'm fascinated with or I'm, I, I believe in as such, although that's a great sort of framework, if you will, for someone who doesn't sort of have that diligence to sort of be able to do this is go and study the Pomodoro technique and then just put that framework in place for a little bit and then adapt it. But it's more for me actually, funnily enough, from my uh, marathon training in that my coach um, has always trained me in that it's not about how far you run, it's how long you run for, which is quite a different approach to my previous uh, triathlon coach was it was all about, okay, so, you know, you're going to go out and you're going to run 40Ks 
well, you know, that's if you're doing a marathon, but you're going to run, you know, 10 Ks in this session and train, or you're going to go into a 20 K run or whatever it might be. And it was very like different in when I actually was able to change this new coach. Well, not change my new coach, but the method my new coach is putting in place is it's it's about time. So whether it's uh, I'm doing a train for a half marathon or a full marathon, the, every session, every single session has been about time. It's not been about how, how far I run or how fast I run. So let's get out there and do this for 25 minutes or go out there and do an hour run or you've got a two-hour run on Saturday or whatever it might be. And the thing that I found really interesting about that is then it's not about the actual work. It's about just sitting down and being focused. And I guess applying that to, to the business side of stuff, it's not about, okay, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to force myself just to write 20,000 words or I'm going to write 5,000 words or I'm going to reply to 50 emails or I'm going to make 15 sales calls in this next block of time. It's I'm going to sit down for 25 minutes and make sales calls. If that's one sales call or 10 sales calls, who cares? It's just 25 minutes of sales calls. And I think that takes a lot of pressure off mentally. It, it definitely does for me. And I think every beast is a little bit different. But for me, it's been really freeing from a, a training perspective for the, the marathons and stuff, but also from a work perspective to say, well, I'm going to sit down and just do emails for 25 minutes. And it's an easy goal. 25 minutes is not hard. It's not tough. It's not scary. It's just 25 minutes. Uh, and there's times that when I hit that 25 minutes, I go, okay, I'm just going to keep going. I'm on a roll because I've built that momentum up uh, from a work perspective. But I found it's just been very freeing to not worry about like how many words I'm writing or how many calls I'm making or how many emails I'm, I'm, I'm cleaning up or whatever the task is you might be doing. Uh, it's just about sitting down for 25 minutes and making that commitment for 25 minutes and just and just playing flat in that 25 minutes. And it's been been really, really good over the last sort of you know 18 months, 24 months I've sort of been applying that diligently and I think coming at that angle has been really freeing which yeah yeah I mean I, I totally understand what you're saying with that I mean I some of the things that I work on because I do a lot of you know media production and things 25 minutes isn't really very long mm. um uh, but it's a very very important point that you make uh, and I found this in the past and I, I I pretty much share share with you that you know putting out a block of time and just doing the task or, or addressing yourself to the task in, in, in a focused manner takes away the pressure. If you, t- sorry, you can take away the pressure of, of trying to achieve within that space. Um, y- you're actually potentially up the quality. I found that if I give myself a period of time to do something and I say, I've really got to complete it in that time, then you're actually putting massive stress on yourself, which can affect your ability to achieve anything. You know, and, a, and also affect the quality. Whereas, as you say, if you just block it out and say, "Look, I'm just doing it. I'm doing this thing," it, it does help if it's something that needs to be done but doesn't have an absolute deadline. I find. Oh, absolutely. Yeah? If you got an absolutely. if you got an absolute deadline, then you know, being you, you know, you, I think you have to be a little bit more severe with yourself. Look at and, and maybe, line, sit down and just get the work done. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, but here's here's a an interesting aside on that one, kind of bringing it back to the Pomodoro briefly. Um, I'm I'm a big person for focus. Once I've got focus, then that's it, and I can I can keep going, and not notice things for two three hours at a time. You know, it's that whole flow state thing, which is oh, a completely yeah. separate conversation. Um, but what I struggled with initially with with the twenty five on five off or whatever was what to do in those five minutes that was sufficiently pick up and put downable. Yep. <laughs> Don makes up a word. Um, but was sufficiently put up, pick up and put, put downable, but was it sufficiently involving that your brain stopped engaging in the previous task and disconnected so you got that rest? Because initially I would just kind of say, right, okay, 25 minutes, I've got my own little timer that I use like you, and it would bing at me and say, time's up, ring its little alarm clock, and I'd stand up and, and walk away from the desk and in three before I know it, five minutes has gone, but I don't feel that I've disconnected. Yeah. Do you have something that you do that, that works for you to do that? Oh, yeah, but I don't put it on, on, uh, on air. No, no. Um, <laughs> uh, different things. I think it's a mixture of I'll literally do some push-ups and just try and get some blood flow. I'll uh, mm. walk out of the room and go get a glass of milk. Um, it's a, a range you, You're trying of... to cover up now. You're trying to sound healthy. You're covering up for the past comment. Yeah, you? that's it, yeah. But um, the way I've tr- I try and do it, which is, I guess, a little bit different again, is I won't come out to the same task generally. Right. If I'm mm-hmm. going to get up, if I'm going to actually, at the 25-minute mark where the, the morning goes off, I'm either going to make a decision there in a split second, I want to roll, don't fuck with this, keep moving, 
Mm-hmm. iTunes again don't, don't like when I swear, do they? No. All right. Actually, you can you can say what you want. Ah, okay, cool. Uh, I'll just have to mark it mark it explicit. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll, we'll debate whether we bleep, bleep that out. Okay. <laughs> but um, what what we're getting at there is that if I'm in if I'm in state, I'm in flow, I'm in rhythm, I'm in momentum, whatever sort of wanky you know <laughs> term people are using these days, um, or this week. I'll just keep working through it. I'll just be like, okay, cancel, keep working, don't stop the flow, just keep going through it. Mm-hmm. But if I'm going to say, okay, there's 25 minutes on this task, if that um, timer goes off and I'm getting away from my desk, I'm walking away from that task. If I come right. back to my desk, I'm doing something completely different. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm doing emails for 25 minutes. Wherever I get done in 25 minutes is that's done, bang. Walk away from my desk for five minutes, um, do, whatever need, do whatever I need to do. do, do a bit of Twitter, do some social media, whatever it might be. I come back and do something completely different, like I'll make some calls. I will then go away for 25 minutes, do that, I'll come back for five minutes, I'll go away for five minutes, come back again, sit down, and that's where I am going to be doing a blog post or I'm going to be mind mapping out a, a new idea or I'm going to go and do whatever it might be. So I really try and make that distinction when I come back to do something different. So it is a, it is a clean break mentally because, um, you know, what it takes to, to write something compared to what it takes to make a sales call compared to writing an email are three completely different things. So I think that almost helps break that as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, and, and you identified there, let's get a little bit technical, but you identified quite a few what I would class as granular tasks. Yeah. You know, crunching through your emails or making sales calls. The, the, the one that might, in my, in my world, the one that might bleed over would be the creative one of the, of the, the blog post, for example, uh, where you get in the flow of writing something. And great, if you can crank it out in less than 25 minutes, uh, it becomes a granular task. Or make, oh yeah, and, and making notes on a job is, is a good thing, I think, to, to try and keep inside of a time frame. Um, just blasting a brainstorm of the notes out uh, with your world-famous mind map technique. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. But, uh, um, I was going to say that it, like, I think part of the whole writing to a deadline thing comes from, I, I guess, two influences. If you sort of take your prompt from earlier about what influences me, I think the way I sort of tried to build this little process and, and this, this workflow is um, a mixture of two things. The, the, the theory of free writing, which um, was sort of passed to me from a friend, Ed Dale, who um, encouraged me to read a book called uh, Accidental Genius, I think it is, from – I can't remember the guy's name who wrote it. But in there it talks about free writing. The whole book's about free writing where you basically sit down for a set period of time and just write freely about whatever topic you want to write about. No goal for how many words you're writing, no sort of you know consciousness of, of it being absolutely correct. You just sit down and you start writing. And – that mixed with a very freeing thought or um, awakening, if you will, if you want to get a bit zen about it, from Annie Lamont who wrote a great book called um, Bird by Bird, which is a, a book on, on writing and how to actually be creative and how to write stuff. And in that um, book, there's a, a thing I took away from that was a, a, a saying or a, or a theory or whatever, again, you want to call it, is that you know, you've got your first draft – is your downdraft, and then you've got your updraft where you clean it up. So in that first 25 minutes, I'm going to sit down. I'm just going to get it down. I'm doing my downdraft. I'm just getting everything down on paper, no spell check, no um, review, no whatever it might be. It's just get it down on paper. And if I can't think of the word, write pink elephant or write something really bizarre so it's going to stand out for me when I actually go back and edit it. And then in another 25-minute session, whether it might be later in the afternoon or the next day, it's that session where – you actually do the updraft, and that's where you clean it up. So you've got two drafts. You've got your downdraft, then you've got your updraft, and then you've got your final. So it's almost three separate sessions, if you will, to write something out. Trying to write and edit at the same time, it just doesn't work. And I tried that and tried that and tried that. And for some people it might work, but for all the people who have produced a lot of books that I've been really engaged with over the last 12 months, um, it's just for them, it is this process. It's just getting it down. Just get the down draft. The first draft is crappy. It's a crappy down draft. And then the second draft is the up draft. So you're cleaning it up and you make yourself feel better about the content. And then you've got your final draft where you go back and really polish it up. So uh, I think trying to sit down and write a full blog post that you can publish at the end of the sitting is almost stupid because it's not going to be anywhere near as good as it's going to be. It's going to take you much longer than it should. And it's just not going to be as good, as I said. Yeah, that's a, a great tip, and and you know I I follow 
I follow Ed's stuff as well. And, and by the way, Accidental Genius is by Mark Levy or Levy. Beautiful. Uh, and all these things, we'll put those in the show notes so that people can, uh, can follow along. Uh, put them in the show notes for the podcast. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, to- I totally agree. I was, I was guilty as everybody else um, of trying to do a perfect first go. When I when I first started doing things like this, um, you know, I, I produced a fair amount of training material, um, and really, you can get really, really hung up on the the detail in training material when you're trying to produce something um, for somebody that you may never meet. Mm-hmm. You know, you're trying to get it right, and trying to cover all the bases, um, and and it really did help me. Um, it really did help me to be able to just drop down the, as you say, as you call it, the downdraft. It's like, look, I want to cover this, you know, and, and I, I, I live for mind maps. If I didn't, if I hadn't discovered mind maps, I don't think I would actually be employable right now. Uh, I discovered mind maps in, in university, and that's definitely a, another a topic for another podcast. But yeah, I, I'm um, I was high school. Oh wow, you lucky guy. <laughs> yeah, I, thought, oh, I remember I, my my memory of this is for whatever weird reason, my mum's a teacher, and for whatever weird reason, I remember her dragging my butt when I was in year seven. Or year eight, so you know, a, a, um, a junior, or if it's, I think it's a junior, so yeah, whatever, no, no, anyway, you said it's a 13, 14 year old kid, um, to an after school session where someone came in and taught us how to do mind maps. Um, oh, wow. For like an hour and a half after school. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I, I really, we, we, it, while this is an audio podcast, um, I think covering covering in some way mind maps and, and general note taking is definitely a topic that we we should cover at some point because that I yeah, I sure. think having having worked with you and you know been on the receiving end of of that kind of output from you you know I've I've seen your output increase massively by you um, hey I'm going for buzzword of the week by you leveraging <laughs> techniques like mind maps really really well. Um, you know, you can generate a phenomenal amount of content uh, using the techniques that you've you kind of practiced over the years. But here's just my my two two penneth for the for the week is if you know anybody at all that ever needs to take any kind of notes whatsoever, the younger they are, the better. Um, show them how to do mind maps if you know or read up about it. Um, because if somebody had showed me when I was thirteen, fourteen. Um, how to do mind maps, I think it would have changed my life even more than it did when I discovered them in my 20s. And I, uh, yeah, absolutely. They're great for just, you know, getting stuff down. So even if you're just being a, if you're consuming information, be it at a, a seminar or a, a general board meeting or you're in a sales meeting, whatever it might be, you're actually trying to consume some information. It's an awesome way just to easily visually get the actual information down on paper that makes your retention rate go up higher. But as a note-taking device or, or a content creation device, if you're in that sort of game, and, and that you know, whether even if you're a salesperson, you're trying to like plan out a sales meeting. You know, you can sort of say, okay, this is what these are the points I want to cover from a, an introduction perspective, a, a product perspective, a, a benefit perspective. Here's my close, and you can sort of draw those first um, branches out, and then you can drill into each of those branches. So even from a pardon me, from a a sales perspective, it works whether you're doing that sort of content creation because creating uh, in your mind a, a process that's going to be in a face to face sales meeting is still content creation. And I think, you know, people hear the word content creation, they think of it, oh, it's when you're creating books or you're writing, you're writing something. And yeah, that's, you know, a, a big chunk of the pie. But, you know, whether you are a, an, an accountant trying to, you know, structure how you're going to do uh, a meeting with your very first client, you know, you're going to have a new client come in, you're going to go through their, their tax and their um, obligations and their income and their expenses, whatever it might be, you want to have a structure to that first meeting. A mind map is a great way to get that down and really plan out the, the questions you're going to ask that person to make you, you look more professional and more of a, an authority and a more of a, a leader and someone to take advice from. And, and that's really important if you want to sort of really solidify your business and grow it and, and have something that's, that's measurable and manageable and, and, and leverageable and, and all that sort of stuff. And now that that is a fantastic tip that came right out of left field, but uh, absolutely, you know, the the whole idea of leadership, um, of, of being, you know, the guy at the front that people look to. Um, we we actually, you and I, I talked quite a lot about leadership um, because somebody asked you a series of questions about it a couple of weeks ago, and we really kind of drilled down into that. And you you 
don't necessarily see yourself as as a true leader. Uh, we discussed that, but you know, if if you are going to be the guy at the front of the room, being able to put across what you're trying to say in a logical manner that people can follow along with, that's quite a challenging thing to do on the fly. And yep. and if if you can't hold their attention by being logical and and showing that progression, you know, it can cause difficulties. Even people don't even know, always notice it. Sometimes you get some confused faces in the room, and it's obvious. But but half the time, it kind of makes sense where you're going. Yeah. But if you can use some kind of a tool, as you say, the mind map is a, it's a fantastic tip to just, before you go and make a, some kind of presentation or just you want to cover some points in a meeting, just dumping your ideas down and then maybe just shuffling them around, yeah. looking at the logic, standing back from it, um, so that when you come, come to do it, you've, you've thought it through, even for two minutes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this is where we come into technology again is where things like the iPad and the, the iPhone and stuff make it so easy to do this stuff because mm. it's just not only can you get it down on, on, onto a mind map, be it uh, an electronic mind map, as you said, you can then literally just with your finger on the screen of the iPad move the, the branches of the mind map around so you can easily just change the structure of it and, and really mould the mind map so much easier um, on a, an iPad or, a, or an iPhone or even on sort of, you know, your Mac or your PC than you can on paper. Paper's a great way to start. But once it's there, you've got to rewrite it to sort of adjust it. Whereas with the, the digital stuff these days, it's literally just, I'm going to just move this arm over here. I want to talk about that point second. Actually, I want to cover that point in that different section of the, the whatever it might be. And it's such an easy way to move stuff around. It's just awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I say, I think I think either in the podcast talking about the the kind of the the logic behind my maps, or even maybe you know we could put a little video together on a specialist topic on my maps because they make they're a big part of your business and a big part of your content creation, and they're a massive part of my life. Um, and, and I know you've got some real gold to share about how you can benefit from just like the tip, as you say, planning out your little as a leader or a salesperson i think that's a fantastic tip but back back to the content stuff in our last couple of minutes you know well however you do it whether you do it as a mind map or whether you do it as some bullet points um you know there's all kinds of technologies or just piece you know, just piece of paper and a pencil but that that idea of the downdraft uh and then walking away from it i think i think that's made a big difference to a lot of people um not least of which because some people, like me, for example, have a real problem working linearly. And if you try and get something right, starting at the beginning and working towards the end, if you're not a naturally linear person, that's quite difficult. Whereas if you do that downdraft in whatever format, you can, in your next session, you can pick which bit you want to refine. You've got the framework, the structure and everything, all the bits. You just pick a bit up, work on it for a bit in your 25-minute window, and then you put it back down again. So it, it, it kind of makes a, a large and linear task into a more granular task that's easier to manage. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's, that's what I get from it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Cool. Well, we're getting close to time. Uh, this was our first half an hour. I think it went quite well. Um, as I said, I've, the, two, uh, the two books you made reference to in the, uh, as we went along, I'll put those in the show notes. Um, I think this is going to be good. I think you've got a lot to give um, from your experiences in business and the, the different techniques that you use to to get, well, to be honest, the different techniques you use to get by <laughs> on any given day. Yep. You know, because that's where, that's where some people are. Some people are, you know, crikey. I don't, you know, I don't want to run multi-million dollar businesses. I just want to get by. Absolutely. Uh, so, and I think you've got a lot to put into that. So, hopefully, we'll get some uh, some feedback in the comments because, uh, you know, one of the things you said to me uh, is is you you want to talk about what people want to know about, yeah? Absolutely, absolutely. I can you know crap on about a lot of different things, but really want to make sure that uh, it, it's resonating with people and, and and it really fits what they're trying to do and where, where they are in their in their journey. And it again sounds a bit sort of you know wanky and that sort of stuff. But that's really what we're trying to do, I guess. Yeah, and I think on that note, we're definitely going to flag this as explicit because I just can't go through and beep all these out. <laughs> Does that mean we're going to be featured as uh, podcast of the week? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Who Find knows out. what Apple thinks? Run a test. Oh. We'll yeah, test it. Let's... 
Yeah, I, I think if we if we insert some of the more explicit words in the titles of the podcast, I don't think we'd get away with that. <laughs> anyway, let, yeah, let's let's do another one of your techniques. Let's run a split test. Beautiful. Okay, Pete. Well, that's pretty much half an hour. This has been a really good chat. Uh, I'm hoping that people are going to find this interesting, and that you know we're going to keep up our little weekly routine. Absolutely, mate. It's in the diary. It's got to happen. Oh, there you go. You and your diary. I'll tell you what, if it's in that diary. It's in the diary, it gets done. If it's not in the diary, it doesn't get done. That's the, yeah. the, the, there's the last takeaway tip, I think. Awesome tip to close with. All right, buddy. Speak to you next time. Well, next time. Speak to you next week. Cheers, mate. Bye now. Bye. You've been enjoying another fine episode of PrinterCast with Pete Williams and Dom Gocher. Make sure to hang out with the boys online at www.printermarketing.com or drop them a line via printercast at printergroup.com.